Attention American poker players, do you want to legally cash out your poker winnings to PayPal? Then head to GlobalPoker.com and see why it's the fastest growing site for US players. That's GlobalPoker.com. Poker Stories is an audio series that features casual interviews with some of the game's best players and personalities. Each episode highlights a well-known figure in the poker world and dives deep into their favorite tales both on and off the felt. Hello and welcome to Poker Stories, a podcast brought to you by Card Player, the Poker Authority, and hosted by me, Julio Rodriguez. This is episode number 41, featuring Kristen Bicknell. Uh, Kristen is only 31 years old, but she's already accomplished quite a lot in the poker world. Not only was she a supernova elite for three consecutive years online, but she also has two World Series of Poker bracelets, having won the ladies event back in 2013 and the $1,500 bounty event in 2016. Kristen has had quite a run in the last six months, winning an event at the Five Diamond Classic in December and following that up by taking down the High Roller event at the APPT Macau. And then just last week, Kristen entered a 5K event at the Deep Stack Championship Poker Series at the Venetian. There were 178 entrants, but she somehow found herself heads up with poker pro Alex Foxen who just happens to be her boyfriend. I mean, can you imagine that? Getting to play heads up with your significant other for a big tournament title? It's crazy. Anyway, you'll hear all about that experience and Kristen's race car driving dad and even the weird reason why she has been listening to the same Daddy Yankee song on repeat for the last 10 days. Enough intro. Here's my conversation with Kristen Bicknell. I am here with the one and only Chrissy B, Kristen <laughs> Bicknell. Uh, did you go by Chrissy growing up? Um, I guess maybe from my parents okay. or from family. I mean, you chose it as a screen name, so that's on you. Yeah, that's true. I'm not yeah. really sure why. Nobody but calls you Chrissy in uh, everyday life? Now they do, um, but I guess in everyday life it was like a family or people who were close to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, it was Kristen, but yeah, Chrissy B, that was my poker name, and now mm-hmm. it's kind of stuck. Yeah, so we are here in the a little bit noisy... Uh, Venetian parking garage, otherwise yes. known as the tournament room, the side of where uh, you just took down or chopped a, uh, a big tournament. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. But right now we are. Uh, you're about to late reg this eleven hundred dollar event here, and you were so gracious to give me your time before doing so. Uh, but you just got here on a plane and you were at the gym and like. How do you have so much energy? You're starting your day now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy, and it's like 7 p.m. I, um, It's just kind of midway through the series, and then having that nice win the other day, I mm-hmm. figured it's kind of a nice time to take a couple days off, and I had had a couple days or like maybe even a week or two into the series where I was like missing workouts and not really putting health as a priority over like I want to be there, I don't want to late reg, and realize, you know what, for a week... I was feeling a little bit tired and I had a good week. Why not just like go to the gym and stuff and late register this tournament? I can that revive. doesn't sound like time off to me. That no, sounds- it's really not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just time spent in another way. And yeah. it's important because, you know, sitting for whatever, 12 hours a day is so Is that part so of your, your you. normal routine when you're on tour on, on the circuit? Yeah, definitely. I, d- I definitely try to probably work out like four or five times a week and really try to just like take care of myself in a way of you know you're sitting at a table in a really bad position so trying to like strengthen my back muscles or whatever it is to like keep my posture good and yeah I just feel so much better when I do that and it's like it's actually shocking because I remember I think it was last week I missed the gym like four days in a row or something and it's like how much it translates to poker I could beat that record (laughs) (laughs) yeah how much it translates to poker because I just like don't think as clear I don't feel as good I'm not in the same so you've never gone like so hard at the gym that you just show up at the table and you're dead like you just have no Um, you're one of those infuriating people who like gets invigorated by a workout that's interesting yeah probably I have had some (laughs) the funniest uh, experiences I've had is taking pre-workout do you know what that is no I don't know what a pre-workout is why do you need to work out before workout okay (laughs) 
it's like this concoction you take oh, okay. before you work out mm-hmm. that has like stimulants and stuff. Creatine. I don't know, like lots of it muscle probably, milk. Usually it has like caffeine and then like okay. different uh, like uh, amino acids that help whatever build muscle. The stuff muscle, you buy blah, blah, GNC. Blah. Yeah. Okay. So I took a pre workout that I had never taken before, and mm-hmm. it. And then I went and played poker after, and I played, like, a psycho. Like, <laughs> I seven-bet shoved ace four. I don't know what happened, but it made me have no fold button. So, yeah, I get energized, especially when I take those kinds of things. So now I have to be careful. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Now you're, now you're drinking something very green. <laughs> it just looks like yeah. blended avocado. Yes, that's actually what it is, some okay. avocado smoothie. I have a yeah. good eye for avocado. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit okay. about St. Catharines. All right. What is St. I know it's by Niagara. Is that Niagara yes. Falls? Yeah, St. Catharines is just a little city uh, right outside Niagara Falls. Well, yeah, I was told it far. is the largest city in the Niagara region. Is it really? Apparently, oh. according to Wikipedia. Yeah, that could be right. I don't really like it, to be fair. Once I moved out I and started traveling around, I was like, oh my God, there's so What's many wrong great with, cities. What's uh, wrong with the falls? I was there for the Falls View Tournament, very you, beautiful yeah. you know, scenic area. You know what? I feel a little disappointed that the whole area is a little bit run down. Like, okay. I feel that... Um, I don't know. It's not. It doesn't feel like a striving area. It feels that like houses aren't maintained very well and businesses are not maintained very well it's either. Seen better days. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna sound like a snob now, but like, there's in Canada, there's like Tim Hortons towns or there's Starbucks <laughs> towns, and I can just say there's only one Starbucks in St. Catharines or maybe two, oh, but man. like it's a Tim Hortons town. If Got that makes it. sense. You I've never I mean? heard a Canadian badmouth Tim Hortons before. I just had Mike Lee on the oh. podcast, and he wouldn't dare. So, really? Yeah. I hate Tim Hortons. Oh, I there will you bad go. Mouth it. Yeah. What, there's one bridge burned for sponsorship I'm down sorry. the line. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tim Hortons. I am on Team Starbucks. Team Starbucks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Maybe they'll come calling with a poker sponsorship. There we go. Uh, so what were you getting into in, in St. Catharines? What were you up to uh, as a as a youngin? Family? Um, what do they do? Yeah. My, uh, my family has a family-run business where they... They, uh, build stock cars and my dad's a stock car racer um so okay, what is a stock car that's 500 yeah. uh, like, uh that's, that's well, my not dad the... races like what's called 358 modified so okay. like 358 dirt modifieds so it's these um kind of like custom designed cars that race on dirt tracks the figure eight ones where they can uh, collide just ovals <laughs> yeah just ovals but there's a lot of hitting it's actually yeah. really exciting racing because on like dirt racing versus asphalt racing seems like in my opinion is a lot more fun because there is like a lot of more Rubbing aggressive is yeah exactly racing, exactly to yes quote tom cruise yes exactly so i grew up in the racing kind of business i was at the racetrack with my dad every weekend uh, i used you to race first or last my dad no, I'm just quoting oh. Talladega Nights now. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, my dad. So my dad's actually a really good race car driver. He's probably like, yeah, he's kind of the best at what he does. And really, yeah. So what's his name? His name is P- Peter Bicknell, but his name is Mr. Smallblock. That's what he's known for because mm-hmm. it's like this class that he. Who is more famous? My dad. Really. Yeah, I mean, like to be fair, I don't know anything about the racing like, world. He's in the but. Motor Sports Hall of Fame in Canada. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's a pretty like in his like. Uh, niche industry Mm -hmm. he's like a big deal (laughs) so (laughs) yes but he also builds race cars you come from royalty (laughs) in in the racing world yeah Yeah. so I yeah grew up doing that I actually raced go-karts myself Mm -hmm. um, until I was I guess until I moved away from home until I was about 16 or something but But um, I'm guessing you grew up pretty competitive (laughs) yeah and I grew up in a male industry as well. So I was racing go-karts or, you know, only against boys, basically. Yeah, yeah. There was one other girl who raced. Were you a tomboy or were you just like, I'm the girl who's going to prove herself? It's weird. I don't, I yeah, I think the second <laughs> one. I don't think I was ever a tomboy per se, but I, I always felt like comfortable around guys. Mm-hmm. And I, and I never felt that I couldn't do what they did. And I honestly just kind of felt like they suck i can beat them that's and such good that's kind of how i feel in foreshadowing. poker <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right so brothers or sisters i have two sisters all right and what do yeah. they do they are like uh, um my one olympic sister, gymnasts and no, <laughs> my one sister works for my parents business as well mm-hmm. and then the other one does like government social work kind mm-hmm. of thing yeah and uh what was the idea when you were young what did you want to do uh i think Probably at some point I wanted to be a race car driver as okay. well. Um, and then I... You're just like watching those GoDaddy commercials and Danica. <laughs> and he's like, I could do that one day. Something like that. And then I think 
I, I guess I got really interested in like health and nutrition, but I somehow ended up going to university studying criminology. Which Where I, did you go to school? Uh, Carleton University in okay. Ottawa, okay. Ontario. That um, was the first time away from home? Yeah. So in Canada, it's different than the States, by the way. It's like... No. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you sure? So I didn't have a real like college experience, <laughs> I say that as if I'm that makes sense. I'm in our country. Yeah. We didn't, it's not like a, what I hear what it's like in the states when you go to college it's mm -hmm. like some big thing it's not like that here but anyways i so i went to university studied criminology and got like a ba or actually i didn't i'm two courses away from a ba in psychology criminology Let's whatever give it to you. yeah i know That's i think so i deserve close. it come on that is so close. i i went to school for like <laughs> seven years for a three-year program i'm almost there <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was you were gonna put away bad guys. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, I was going to. So I got to school uh, a few weeks in. My boyfriend's roommates, at, like my boyfriend at the time, his roommates uh, said, "Like, do you guys want to play poker?" Mm -hmm. oh, I the said, "Corruption sure. starts so early." I know it started right away, and then I found poker, stayed up all night, played till like noon the next day. I was like, "Oh my god!" On this your is first session? Yeah. <laughs> I, wow. My first session was like 10 hours, One buy 12 on. hours. I don't know what we did. But <laughs> anyways, so I f fell in love with the game. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, played in like these home games around the city and found online. What had been like your exposure to, to cards or poker before that? Honestly, nothing really. Nothing, my dad, right? my dad likes playing blackjack and I knew my parents went to the casino a lot. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of their, away from their business. They liked going to gamble. And so I kind of understood blackjack. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I had never really watched poker before, and and then it was, so it was all pretty new to me. So I'm trying to picture the yeah. year. This is uh, 06? I think it's Your first 04. Year? 04, okay. Yeah, yeah right. I graduated high school in 04, so yeah, something around then. Okay. 04 or 05. So right, the, the poker boom is happening right around then. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're hooked. Yep. You go out to the library and get all the poker books? Yep. Kind of thing, yeah. I remember, like, driving to Turning Stone, and we had some, like poker pdf file with tips i forget who wrote it and we're like reading these like tips of what to do and reading poker books and the first summer after my first year in university i went to i think it's in fort erie some like card room where i was allowed to play because i was 18 at the time mm -hmm. in canada it's 19 so i'd go to the states in this like little whatever indian reserve where Got they had it. a poker room so i remember i had like I forget which poker book it was, but I would write the results of each session, like <laughs> in like the front or the back, and I was like trying to keep track, and I was playing whatever one two and two from five early on. I was just like so motivated. I just loved it, so I would just literally play. Like I would have the longest sessions, like go to hotel room, sleep, wake up, go back to the poker room, and I I just <laughs> was like hooked and l loved it. Yeah, and I was lucky that even to start, I feel like I kind of like probably have some sort of like natural talent or like you, you know. won right away yeah kind of yeah well i mean i, I think did. i think that's a common experience for most poker players because yeah you wouldn't be a poker pro if you got crushed your first time playing poker that's true that is very true and i think that all of us are winners yes if you go back to the beginning yes yeah and then after that not so much yeah. <laughs> and then there becomes a time when it's tough that's true that's very uh, true so when did online poker come in um, probably around that time. Okay. You know, I started, uh, I, you know what? Online poker actually came pretty quickly. And I think I was just playing heads up, sit and goes. And I think that actually helped because me improve a lot. Because you were an action junkie. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. You fill up fast. <laughs> yeah. And it was just, I loved playing heads up online. Mm -hmm. So I did that a lot. And then kind of like dabbled in the tournament world. Um, and... Yeah, tournaments, and then ended up doing. I heard about Supernova Elite, and then I went and did that. Okay, we can't just brush past that because okay. that's a pretty big accomplishment. So it was 2011, 2012, and 2013 yep. that you were a Supernova Elite back when that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, what What motivated you? Uh, what What was your What was your grind yeah. like? Okay. I mean, were you just living at home? You know, just yeah. working. In so, a basement somewhere? So at the time, I think that I had previously been trying to play tournaments, and probably I wasn't playing that well. I think I had made, like, maybe 30K a year, 40K a year for a couple of years in a row. And I was just, like, feeling really frustrated with tournaments. Like, oh, mm -hmm. my God, I, I you know, sa sounding like a standard poker player who's, like, blaming a lot of results on <laughs> luck where I didn't realize, like, probably... It's got to be variance. Yeah, I was just like, oh, my God, like, you know, I'm getting two added right before the final table, whatever. And then I heard about 
supernova elite and i was like wow i can like basically guarantee like 100k plus a year mm-hmm. like if i just play you know this many hours at this game it was i think like eight hours a day at like one two or something and yeah, it said you were playing one two and two four cash games yeah well i had started at 50 cent a dollar okay. i had like i had a 12k bankroll january 1st i was like i'm gonna start at 51 and uh the one thing i've never struggled with is putting in time because yeah. i truly love like i just like I love playing poker. If you tell me, oh, you have to play eight hours a day, that's not hard for me because I'm like, that's what I want to do. <laughs> How if many that tables? Makes sense. I was playing 24 tables at that time. 24 tables. Yeah, but it was it was full ring and everyone else was doing the same thing. Mm. Uh, most people. So it the action moved kind of slow and you get used to it. It's like a muscle, like a mental muscle that mm. you work up to. So they started at 51 and then I moved up to one two. And even that first year, I ended up like getting past Super Supernova Elite. Um, I, I got like 1.25 million VPPs, so I got like so another. So was the goal just like break even in the cash games and then win your yeah. salary and bonuses, basically? Yeah, it was because I made like 120k or something in rake back. Yeah. So I was like, if I can just like break even at the tables, like, you know, I wasn't the best poker player. I still don't claim to be, but like I have work ethic, I have grind, I have like. A, pretty decent mental game I can focus for a long time and I, you know I build on my strengths yeah I've talked to sense. a couple of people who from that era were like multi-table and like crazy grinding out the supernovas and they said it wasn't so much that you had to be an amazing poker player you yeah. just had to not have any leaks <laughs> yes not give away any chips yeah and eventually you know yeah it's it's a different kind of strategy or skill set and I mean at that age I was I don't know maybe 22 mm-hmm. or something making that kind of money playing poker I was like this is pretty awesome yeah wait you know? so at this point was that what made you abandon your your career as a criminal what you wanted <laughs> to be a criminologist <laughs> yeah I don't know I, I I definitely had I just felt forced to like pick a program it was never a passion mm-hmm. of mine so that kind of um, and then you're like the those last two classes going to school. Don't, yeah, I just just like school stupid. <laughs> what I was going for, I knew that I would never use. Mm-hmm. You know what I was. I also I always knew that like my real passion. Definitely, I discovered a passion in poker, but my real passion always has been like health and fitness since I was pretty young. So I yeah. kind of knew that like that's probably what I should have studied. I'm not really sure why I didn't, but um, I have. Did you have an unhealthy phase while you were grinding? Um, you know, talk to Chris Mormon, yeah. Ari Engel. They had, like, phases where they were, like, smoking 12 packs a day. And, oh, like, um, mine was, it was in the winter in Canada, mm-hmm. in Ottawa, which has, like, a really bad winter. And I remember this one particularly. We had, like, so much snow. It was crazy. I didn't leave the house for, like, three or four weeks, something like that. <laughs> but we would... Um, stay up to like I'd play to like seven in the morning and then like go get like McDonald's breakfast and then watch like a show and then sleep to like 5 p.m. and like because you don't even have much sunlight yeah so that was like I had an unhealthy couple of months in the winter yeah but beyond that um not too bad no not too bad because once I started making money in poker I kind of realized like health is really important like not only for like happiness and life, mm-hmm. but for <laughs> poker as well. So I, um, I think immediately as soon as I could afford it, I got a personal trainer, and started doing that. And realized, and once I did that, actually, it was uh, a really positive thing for me because I, as crazy as it sounds, like I didn't really have a purpose to leave the house, and so even just going to the gym and like speaking to someone who didn't play poker and having like other interactions, yeah, felt really healthy. <laughs> and then you know you're like. I started, you know, lifting weights really heavy. And, like, as a girl, you, like, deadlift, like, more than you weigh. And you're like, ooh, I feel so strong. And then that kind of translates to poker. Like, I'm just even- picturing, like, your first time out and, like, somebody gets off the treadmill and you're like, GG. You know what I mean? Like- <laughs> yeah. And then, like, and there's something to that that even before a tournament, like, when I'm, like, lifting, like, a really heavy weight, it almost just, like, signifies to me, like, you know, that it just, like, helps, I don't know, your confidence like feeling strong yeah. as a person yeah you did it yeah exactly so it's cool um yeah so i'd say i never went too far off you know feeling letting poker like take over my health but Let's it's see. so easy to <laughs> it's it's a constant uh battle that i face because sitting you know 12 hours a day and then it doesn't really make you feel like oh i want to go to the gym you know it's 
I feel good when I'm at the gym and after the gym, but like the wanting to go or, you know, like where do you, what do you give up? Sleep? Like you can't, you know? <laughs> so it, it's hard. It's definitely a struggle. I work really, really hard at Don't go so deep in tournaments. Yes. <laughs> you'll have more time off. Exactly. Just a suggestion I've experienced. See what I, I want it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 2013 was the last year as Supernova Elite because that's the year you said, you know what? Let's try this bracelet thing out. <laughs> you go to the World Series of yeah. Poker. You beat up all the ladies. Yeah. They give you, uh, a couple let's hundred see, thousand. $173,000. Yeah. Yep. Tell me about that bracelet, that event, what your thoughts are on winning a bracelet. Sure, yeah. That was just kind of, I don't want to say it felt like a fluke because I had played ladies events before. It was kind of interesting that that particular event, I realized that in the past, I think it was a couple months prior, I had won an EPT Monte Carlo package to go play the ladies event. And I went there, so I traveled all the way from Canada to Monte Carlo. Oh, I just for the, a 1K ladies event? Yeah, because I won a package. So like That's they paid crazy. for my hotel, they paid for the my The hotel flight. must have been more than yeah, the buy-in. And then I was almost <laughs> like, why did I play this satellite? Now I have to go to Monte Carlo. And like, I don't think like, you know, me and my boyfriend at the time didn't even have that much money for him to go. So I literally went alone. <laughs> so I go alone to Monte Carlo to play this ladies event. And I just spew like a, idiot like I'm just like I'm so much better than everyone I'm playing every hand like yeah I played very badly because and I've done that in ladies events before where I just think I can outplay everybody yeah. and like don't respect people yeah because you you play with the men yeah so you you recognize the other ladies who do it too sure and then you sit down at a table and you're like I've never seen any of these women before yeah. obviously it's, it's natural to be a little overconfident yeah and I just know that I had a lot more experience in them and you know there's part of uh, immature mindset that I had and so that ladies event that I won I remember thinking like I'm gonna play much more solid and I can't just like play any two cards like you know I yeah. need to understand <laughs> the ranges and like people actually you know h how can I really exploit them because almost you know I'm exploiting myself the way I was playing before so I think like with maturity a little bit and realizing like you know I can't just uh, hop into a ladies event and you know play every hand and win every hand and I definitely felt that way also I didn't have that much live experience at the time either so I think that I went from like oh you know I I sit and play 24 tables online of cash <laughs> games and you know I didn't really respect tournament players and I was just like you know these are weak players I can exploit them whatever anyways so that event I went in I was like you know what like I'm going to try to like give them more respect, <laughs> play a little bit um, more strategic, play better, play more disciplined. And yeah, ended up... And it worked out. Yeah, I ran really good. I'm not going to lie. Like I ran very good. I hit a <laughs> one outer like with two tables left. Um, and it, it just kind of seemed meant to be, but it was like such a cool experience. And it wasn't really something I thought... Ne not necessarily wasn't attainable, but it wasn't like you know now I come to the World Series and I'm like I want a bracelet like yeah. it's a dream but it wasn't at the time it was more like I'm going to have fun in the summer yeah. and it ended up happening and it was great and I had lots of friends there and it was just more <laughs> of a fun experience was that your first summer in Vegas uh no I'd always come like in just for a couple weeks mm -hmm. um and you know maybe played cash games or try to play satellites at the main event and things like that but yeah I'd played the ladies the World Series ladies event I think like three times before or something we're going to fast forward to 2016. Okay. The men are invited in this one. Yep. 1,500 <laughs> bounty event, 290,000, and another bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> How much did you win in bounties in that event? I think it was like 17 bounties, 18. So what is that, like nine, uh, nine grand, something, something like that? Something like that. Yeah, I, I really can't remember, to be honest. But, yeah, that was... So that 300K one K and the second great. bracelet. Yeah, yeah that, that one was really fun because I still think about it a lot I hadn't yet become like a tournament player I had kind of just started transitioning from cash games to tournaments and I would say that I played in a way that many tournament players probably would look down upon why would you say that because I think my strategy sometimes was like this guy three bet me light I think he's weak I have like whatever I have doesn't matter I'm four betting him like, or, Why is that not true? <laughs> now well, you have to have blockers. Because now, it, yeah, now yeah. it's like, well, you shouldn't be. The PO solver says hand. that I don't have the, the yeah, right exactly. suits to do exactly. this. Yeah, exactly. I don't have the right hand to four bet with. And 
I'm and not making fun of you guys. You're no, all better than me. I'm sorry. I, me neither. <laughs> and there is merit to that. But there's also merit to, like... You were just sizing people up and being like, nah, I don't think you're going to call. Yeah, and, like, table dynamics. That's what I love about live poker so mm-hmm. much. I love, like, the player-to-player aspect. And I really appreciate, like, you know, this the true theory and strategy. I'm definitely not an expert in that. But one thing that I think is, like, important that people don't probably deviate from enough is, like, understanding that, you know, other people aren't playing that way and you can probably play some exploitable poker and right. get away with it and that's right. what i was so doing i was playing incredibly exploitive if people are playing the same yeah. 30 people in the 25 k's and up so it makes different. total sense yeah than a 1500 hundred dollar world series event so anyways that was fun i was gr- at the time i was grinding 510 cash mm-hmm. for like my money uh income i guess you could say and that just kind of helped my bankroll gave me the tournament bug that made me realize like oh my god tournaments are fun and i didn't feel pressure to you know grind out like a daily whatever try to make money to kind of like pay the bills for the month i had you know some more room to play with and i i could play tournaments without feeling pressure of making money um so that kind of definitely was the spot where i realized like and that kind of so fun kicked you on the road (laughs) yeah definitely so that's kind of where I started uh, changing my focus to tournaments. What were the uh, the bumpy changes you had to go through? Hmm. I, I imagine one of the biggest changes is not playing 24 tables. You know what I mean? And just like yeah. trying to focus on one hand at a time. A little bit. Um, I guess for me, I think the when you transition from online poker to live poker I think like mental game issues probably come up that don't come up before so I had played online only pretty much for like eight years and then um, even when I transitioned to live cash I realized like you know I would one of my biggest leaks was I hate I hated I hated um, having losing sessions so I would play I played like 36 hour sessions and just to just, get that profit yeah it was really dumb and so I just that definitely had mental game leaks and that's something that I work on a lot I think understanding especially in tournaments you know you might feel really like tilted from a certain person or kind of managing the emotions can be a little tough you're in a tournament you have a lot of chips and then all of a sudden you lose a couple of hands and now you're short stacked and like now how do you play that short stack perfectly because a lot of people might just like tilt away Mm -hmm. and just be like oh they give up and that's one thing is like i'll be so mad at myself if i ever give up in a tournament and i just like if i'm in that spot where i'm down to even like four big lines like i'm trying to win and i don't give up like i just i'm like okay i think elliot here's the new situation yeah i think elliot Rowe tells me this but it's like every hand's a puzzle you just start the hand what's the perfect play with whatever big blind you have you know yeah and um so i think i think mental game is a really really important thing and i think that mental game can be the edge that like a weaker player could have over a stronger player if they don't have a good mental game. You know? One thing, uh, maybe I've said it on this podcast before, uh, Greg Raymer said back in the day, believe it or not, he said whenever he loses a lot of chips in a poker tournament, yeah. he just pretends that he actually won the hand and doubled up to that amount. Oh, no matter what happens, he just thinks, I just doubled up to this. Oh, I never like, heard He just that. lies to himself. Yeah, that's really And in his brain, that eight big blinds looks better than four or yeah, whatever, you know what I mean? that's very interesting, yeah. So, I don't know. That's I don't cool. know if that helps. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the party poker. Okay. When did party poker come calling? Um, I guess that was a little over a year ago. Uh, the World Series last year was when I officially signed with them. Mm-hmm. Um, you are an ambassador for Team Canada? Is that how it works? Exactly, yeah. Right now, the only Canadian ambassador. You are, you are Team Canada. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's really fun. It's the things that party poker are doing right now like the events are absolutely epic i think Mm -hmm. um the one coming up specifically the caribbean um where i can't remember exactly the guarantee of the 25 10 million dollars yeah 10 million 25k guaranteed or you mean the main event 10 million guaranteed for the 25k i believe is it okay yeah the the, you're talking about the mar Mar, (laughs) i should know this the baja mar baja mar new new uh, caribbean event yeah yeah so i think um 
it's interesting how they've um, run these events with really big guarantees, and I think that their theory behind it is they save some money with like. They're willing to pay money in overlays to have these events mm -hmm. versus like using the money otherwise in advertising or whatever it is and thinking that these ad it's almost like a way of advertising. Um, and yeah, I was talking to Mike Sexton about that and he was okay. very adamant. He basically said, the only way you get players is by putting huge guarantees up. You yeah. can't shy away from that. You just kind of have to do it. And as a business, it seems like Party Poker wants, they'd rather suffer the occasional overlay yep. then just pour money into advertising exactly. where the players never see a dime of it. Exactly. Yeah. And the one thing that I feel so proud to represent them is that they are so um, like, I, I don't know if loyal is the word, but they really want the players to be happy mm -hmm. and they're really they make decisions based on that and they're open to feedback. They I think their customer service is very good, um, and I think that that, to me, is a really important part of a poker site, um, and you want to know that you're not, you know, being, not necessarily taken advantage of, but not appreciated, or that the players have no say in um, the structure of things, you know, and the players definitely do. They're very open to feedback. They want, you know, people to tell me Something that all, not all everyone is doing in the industry these days. Exactly, yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about those tournaments. We have some... Um, well, actually, first, before I get into okay. the rapid questions, let's talk about about the big, uh, the big heads-up battle. Okay. A uh, few days removed from you and your beau taking down a 5K Big Blind Ante event here. Yep. An MSPT event here at the Venetian. Yeah. That's got to be an awesome experience. Yeah. For those who don't know, you're dating... Alex Foxen. Yeah, it, it's really crazy. So I was kind of looking at the numbers. I, I forget what it is exactly, but since we started dating, I think we've both just gone on like the biggest heaters, <laughs> and um, it, in like some weird ways. Like we went to Macau together. I win an event. I win this trophy. Yeah, you won the high roller, and then he won the super high roller the next day, right? Yeah, like I was at the final table while he was chip leader in another thing. <laughs> so I went. We get matching trophies. Then like. <laughs> He wins LAPC something, gets like a watch. The from twenty five K. Yeah. Yep. And then I recently just won the same watch. Really? Yeah. We're at like Bellagio Five Diamond. Was it the Hublo the Hublo? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're at Bellagio Five Diamond in December. I win the five K mm -hmm. and then the next event he finishes like third and I forget where he finished. <laughs> I felt like he won because yeah. it was a really big prize. But, yeah. Um I believe He made a lot of money. The yeah. next oh, day, yeah. for a second. I'm the worst. Wow. <laughs> I was there. I promise. Anyways. Um, so we've gotten on like this insane heater together and we yeah. all, and I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, the energy is very positive and real between us. And yeah, we ended up heads up in this tournament, which That's was crazy. So there's like a hundred and what? 183, 187, something like that. Yeah. Runners in this 5k. Yeah. And you guys take the maximum amount of the prize pool you can possibly yeah. take. Finish one, two. I yeah. think you had the chip lead heads up. Um, it was even. It was like I uh, maybe I had a tiny bit more. You must have had, had a, a little bit, bit more, more because, because he doubled three, right? Yeah, and then I was left with like two big blinds. And that stupid cooler that he got. Yeah, I Where know. I it was yeah, whatever. It yeah. Anyway, you oh. did chop it up. Yes. Um, I just can't even imagine what that feels like. Yeah, it you was. You get to go home with. I'm not gonna lie. It took. I think it was two days later. I wrote him and I was like, "Oh my god, did that really happen?" <laughs> like, because when you're deep, well, for me, when I'm on a final table, when I get deep like that in a poker tournament, I'm so focused, and there's a level of like adrenaline and stress hormones yeah. that every tournament I've won, it feels fake. Like I see pictures or I'll watch a stream and I'm like, I don't think like, is that really me or did yeah. that really happen? <laughs> like I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what that phenomenon is, but like it's real that it it doesn't seem real that it happened. And I look at pictures from like the wind the other day and I'm just like, oh my God, it's yeah. so crazy. Like it just all feels really, really surreal. And yeah, I don't know, it's interesting. And we had just made a final table together in Barcelona. We final table at 25K <laughs> together. And that ended up going bad, seventh and eighth. But it was funny because I, I don't know if you saw it, I made a tweet and I said, oh, we finished seventh and eighth, but next time we'll be one and two. There and you go. It happened like within two months. So. Put it out in the universe, it'll happen. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, how did you and Alex meet? We met 
I guess, playing poker. Actually, I only ask because yeah. you, uh, not the first poker player you've dated. Yeah. What's it like dating another person who does this for yeah. a living? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I love it. Okay. I think that it's really nice. Uh, maybe it's the type of a relationship that I like having that, you know, I can kind of like a best friend relationship. Um, yeah, I met him playing poker. It's actually, I kind of have a funny story. Uh, we were playing at, I think it was like Seminole Hard Rock. He was at my table okay. and I had never like heard him, seen him anything before. And I took a picture of him and I was like, who is this kid? Cause like he'd three bet me like a bunch and he was like the way he was playing and like his table presence. I was just like, is this kid like good? Does he know what he's doing? Like <laughs> he seems like a mate. Like I was just trying to find out who is this kid. And he seems like a what? <laughs> a maniac? A maniac? I don't okay. know. Okay. <laughs> he plays very aggressively. And, um... So, yeah, that's where I had first met him. And then we were on the same table a couple of times last summer. And mm. then, yeah, kind of started talking. And, yeah, definitely. But it must be awesome to, like, or horrifying, yeah. I guess, depending on how you how you look at it. Yeah. Uh, to, ha- to have somebody who knows exactly what you're going through when you bust a tournament yeah. or when something doesn't go your way to have... Or just to talk hands over with. Yeah, I love it. I don't know. I think that it... But then again, you also can't escape poker. Yeah, exactly. I think, like, with me and Alex, I feel like he's such a good, like, emotional support uh, that it has really, like, made me so much stronger, especially with tournaments, because there is all that disappointment and um, all the emotions that come along with playing tournaments. I think that it's really nice having someone kind of, like, I don't know, go through it with you. Yeah. Um, and just someone who gets it. Yeah. You know, if uh, somebody goes home to their non-poker yes. spouse and just says, I lost yeah. 15K in, in cash today or yeah. something, they might not always have the best thing to say in response to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, like, even this summer, I, I forget what happened exactly, but I was having, I was really upset from poker. I think I, like, bubbled a tournament and then bubbled another one or something. And then we went out for dinner and just, like, there's that, you know, having someone who, like, really gets it and can kind of, like, say the right things or... And vice versa, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that me and him, we're... It's, like, crazy how similar we are just in our kind of, like, work ethic, the way we view poker, the way we, like, are in life. So it seems that things that we've, like, made each other stronger and definitely it's, it's really nice. But... Yeah, on the flip side, or not really with him, but like in past relationships, I think, you know, it can be, there is like challenging parts to it, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that it helps if everyone is, I don't know, like emotionally opened with each other and on the same pages in like even skill, like, you know. I think that's important to like right not... like if one of you was way better than the yeah. other or playing completely different events I think it would be hard because you know there needs to be a lot of respect actually that's what I think is like the true like success between me and Alex is that like I really feel like he respects me which is important being a girl in poker yeah like when you don't feel that um, I, I feel disrespected all the time at the poker table when I start to feel that from my boyfriend, I'm hypersensitive to that. And, um, you know, it, that's something important. And I need to, you know, res- like respect him as well. And I think that having like a level of respect is really important. Um, and yeah, just being kind of strong emotionally. And yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. I always say he looks yeah. like poker's Chris Pratt. Who's Chris Pratt? Come on. I don't even he know. He looks exactly I like suck. Chris Pratt. I don't Pratt. know anyone. Chris Pratt, was, uh, he's like the star of the Jurassic series now. He's, okay. He's a uh, star lord in Guardians of the Galaxy. I've never heard of any of this. Uh, he I was on such Parks a and sheltered Recreation. life. Okay, I love that show. Okay, he's Andy. Andy, right. like he dates the... Blo- like, uh, he dates the uh, April, the girl. Oh, really? Okay, but here's where you're... Okay, okay you're picturing fat... Chris Pratt. I don't know. Yeah, okay. you are. Wait, he he got in shape when he okay. became a Marvel character. Okay. Now you and uh, I'm, him and Alex look look alike. Very okay, similar. I'll look it up. After. In my opinion, I don't Let's know. See. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> Good looking dude. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some uh, some rapid questions. How okay. about that? All right. I read on your Twitter that you got a hole in one. I did. That is infuriating to me. 
<laughs> it should be because I didn't appreciate it at the time at all. I, I, I swung and I was like, ah, it's such a bad shot. This was on a real golf course. Yeah, right? this was yeah a mini the golf. ladies' tees. It was like 100, that counts. 100 and something yards. I can't remember. Uh, I hit the fringe and it just like perfectly rolls into the into the hole. <laughs> so infuriating. Yeah. You've golfed like six times in your whole life probably. No, okay. I mean at that point it was like my maybe like 20th round. That's infuriating. 20? Yes, I know. There are, yeah. there are 90 year old men on this I earth. I know. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Did you, you still have the ball? Is no. it like Is it like <laughs> shadow box on your wall or something? No. Because I didn't really appreciate like. You just threw it in the lake afterwards? or? I don't know. No, it's definitely somewhere <laughs> I guess. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. What about your bracelets? Do you keep them somewhere special? Yeah. They're Where? In well, a box. I mean, you don't have to like in a special place. Okay. Not really special place, but they're in a box. I, okay. You know, I like them. You don't have them displayed. Well, I just moved them? into a place, and I basically have like a mattress on the floor and a desk set up at the moment. <laughs> so there's nowhere to display them. Got I did it. have them on my desk. Like right. when I had a nice office and grinded online, <laughs> and I would look at them every time I had a bad day of poker. And That's be like, a good question. What's I, your uh, office setup like? Um, well, I literally just bought a place a couple months ago, yeah. so right now it's it's whatever. But Nothing before, special. like, or when you get it set up? Oh, I'm um, assuming you are the one with like the crazy monitors. I just or have anything. an iMac that's like 30 and whatever, 30 inch iMac, okay. which I really like because I like simplicity. So okay. I'm not really a fan of like. I like my desk very clean and <laughs> yeah, simple. Nice feng shui going. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Rapid fire questions. Okay. Favorite tournament destination. Uh, I know this, but I forget. Um, <laughs> Australia. Okay. <laughs> Aussie Millions. That's a that's a common answer. What's what's uh, what about it is your favorite? I like Australia. I like going that time of the year in January when it's run. I. Um, think Melbourne's a really cool city. I think everyone's so nice. It's just like a really nice atmosphere to play in. Popular yeah. answer. Australians yeah. are my number four listening country. So. Oh, interesting. They like the compliment. Yeah. The best trip you've taken, but not for poker. Hmm. I imagine you got to see a lot of Canada and the U.S. growing up with a race car dad. Yes. I can't say those were my best trips. Um, <laughs> let's see. I I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe like a camping trip I've gone on, to be honest, might okay. be like some Where of my best go? trips. I don't know. Somewhere in Canada, like the... Uh, you don't I, even know where? I forget the four. <laughs> what was so good about it? I'm an idiot. I mean, okay. Your parents Actually, let you stay up late. Can I change my in okay. answer? My favorite places to go is like the cities in Europe. And so... They kind of coincided with poker trips, but I did, you know, get to spend a couple of days in like Prague or Budapest, mm -hmm. and I really like those cities a lot. I really like Europe, so yeah. yeah. Seeing a city that's Let's not that that's uh, older, older than like eighty years is, is yeah. refreshing. Yeah. Um, biggest pot you've ever won or lost? Your choice. Ooh. Well, I think everyone knows the biggest pot I lost. Because really? it was on Poker Go on TV. Oh, it, it was, was on Poker After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you relive the the horrifying uh, details? Yuck. Um, was it a bad beat or did you misplay it? Oh, I just went, I went for it. Okay. Um. So I have Ace Queen. What did she have? Ace Jack of Hearts. I think I had like two. Who was this against? Tracy Nguyen. I don't know how you say her last name. Um. I think someone had raised, she's in the small blind, I'm in the big blind, I squeeze ace queen, uh, she calls, it's, I actually, I can't really remember the board, I think it's queen eight two, two hearts, and she check raises me, I call, I have ace queen, no heart, the turn is a heart, I can't remember which one, <laughs> and she bets, and kind of big, and for some reason I just... I don't know. She, I had seen her overplay top pair before, and like she kind of plays an interesting style that I hadn't quite figured out. And I decided that like I, I had seen her check raise top pairs before, actually like quite a few times, and I didn't really think she would check raise lots of flush draws. So I was like, oh, maybe she just has like king queen or queen jack yeah. here, and like the river should be easy to play. So I call. This is where I think my mistake is, by the way, is on the turn. I think that without a heart, I should fold. Anyways, I call. And then the river pairs the board, I think, a two. Um, and she bets, like, a really small amount. 
and I mean I have a pretty good hand to turn into a bluff here <laughs> I think it looks like I've pocket queens all day yeah and uh, I thought I, mean, I didn't think she had pocket eights the way that it played out like to have a boat yeah, or yeah. whatever I didn't really think that she check raised a lot of like nut flush draws I didn't I mean I truly didn't really think she even had a flush necessarily maybe like yeah, and so she bets, and I go all in for, like, I don't know, 60K or something. So the pot, it, I didn't actually see the, I don't remember the total number. All I know is it was a really big pot. And well, you know how much you started the hand with, right? Yeah, I, I actually, like, I, I just forget because it was months ago. It was, like, yeah. five months ago, six months ago. So That's I don't know the exact numbers. Have. Shake it off. Yeah, well, the best part was I knew that that day I'd bought in for 100K, and I literally ended up $100. It didn't uh, <laughs> track that, but I had broke even on the day after I had to reload, so I I was down 100k at one point, and then I ended up making my <laughs> way back. And then the next day ended up being like the bigger biggest winner in the game overall. Anyways, I made like 113 the next day. There or you something go, like that. So it was pretty sick. Um, the biggest, so that's the biggest pot I ever lost by far. Um, up until like playing these like 100, 200 cash games, I just recently played in a WPT one where mm-hmm. I did well as also. Um, I'm not sure. I guess probably the biggest pot I ever won was there because I ended up winning like over 100 in that game, 130 or something. But I, I don't remember the exact pot. I honestly have the worst memory of poker. <laughs> like I don't really. No, that's a, that's a good skill to have. Because I play so much that I, yeah. I'm very numb to things. I think it helps me a lot that I don't like get emotionally tied into things too much. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember recently. I remember in times when I was playing. Um, when my bankroll was smaller and I would, I remember playing, I think 10, 20 at the Bellagio and the game started playing really big and I had bought in for like 5k and I was up to 25k and the pots were playing insane. That's a big game. Yeah. And it was like, it was 4am and I literally, I wanted to stay and play, but like my, I was basically committing like bankroll suicide if I stayed. (laughs) So I had to leave because I couldn't like handle like what the stakes were. So I kind of remember that. And I remember winning a big pot in that game that I was like, if I had lost that, I think it was, it was like a 20 K pot. And at the time my bankroll was probably like, I don't know, 60 K or something. So I was like, Oh my God, like that that one was an important one. (laughs) Yeah. That was an important one. I definitely won some important pots in my life when I needed to. So (laughs) yeah. Um, Okay. The best swap or piece you've ever gotten from anybody. I think it's from Alex Foxen. Okay. Yeah, from his Bellagio <laughs> Five Diamond when he finished second. Uh, I had a little piece. There you yeah, go. Yeah, we had swapped. It's good when he can come through. Yes. Um, have you ever come through for anybody on a big swap or piece? Yeah, definitely. I think that um, actually when I won the bounty, someone had a big piece. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know about swaps. I'm trying to think exactly. But definitely when people had bought action. It's good if people are asking you. Yeah. Rather than the other way around. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, your most miserable day at the poker table. Hmm. We can always pick out the good days. Sure. They're on your tournament resume. <laughs> um, I think it's when I'm playing with people. Like, I don't have a particular day, but I can tell you that when I'm playing with people who are just, like, nasty and have, like, that negative aura... I hate Name that. Name them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's like people who are just miserable here and like you know want to be mean to me. <laughs> That's not nice. Have you have you experienced any uh, meanness at the table? Like I have a shocking a little bit. Yeah, some people really don't like to lose to me. There's like the casual misogyny when people get beat by a girl. I guess you know casual or constant. Yes. Well, I just mean <laughs> I'm just kidding. When they I'm when kidding, they like but... even do it in a nice way. Yes. No. It certainly. I think that. People don't like losing to me, so sometimes they voice that. (laughs) What's the worst? To be honest, people are pretty nice to me. I've heard other girls get it worse, but just kind of like, you're so fucking lucky and, you know, Mm -hmm. going on on that rampage. And I'm like, I know I am. (laughs) And, you know, and that probably tilts them more and whatever. Yeah. It's the best thing to do. Yep. You're right, sir. I got lucky. I am lucky. I know. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, What was the worst job you had before poker? I mean, I worked at, like, the concession at my parents' racetrack. They owned, like, a racetrack as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, like, sold whatever, food and stuff. But it wasn't bad. But that was maybe the only job I really had. (laughs) (laughs) If you weren't playing poker, what would you be doing for a living? I would probably be a nutritionist. A nutritionist. Yeah. Can't you do both? 
Um, <laughs> I don't think, if you want to make it in poker, I don't think you have time for anything else. That's, you yeah. know, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And, and you're always and, on the road. And I'm the type of person that, like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it 150%. So, you know, I think that that's, that's important. I strongly believe in that. Uh, what would, oh, sorry, when you were listening to headphones at the table, what are you listening to? probably the same song on repeat i really do that a lot yeah i've if i wait do you mean literally the same song yeah. for eight hours yeah for like so in macau when i won that tournament mm -hmm. i had started with one song on day one and like bagged a lot of chips whatever so i had to keep going until the tournament was over so i listened to that song on repeat for three days so day one yeah. you're in macau you'd laugh if you knew the song <laughs> i'm gonna ask yeah you <laughs> you're listening to one particular song yeah it ends yeah you're three minutes into the tournament, mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what? Let's hear that one more time. Boom. I get in the you zone. You win a small pot. Mm -hmm. Nine minutes into the tournament. You listen to the same song for, for three? the whole tournament. Like, day two, it was going all day. I people even... listening can't see the faces I'm making at you because when, it's so... <laughs> I know. When I worked out in the morning, I'm listening to the same song. Really? Yeah. Okay, what's the song? I don't even know if I'm saying it right. It, I love, like, Spanish music. It's, mm -hmm. like, Dura. Okay. Dura. I don't, I don't uh, speak, I, listen to Spanish music. You want me to play it? Either. Yeah, let's, or, let's uh, okay. just it's... less than 30 seconds of it, though. Otherwise, we'll get sued. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Okay. I was just listening it to it again today. Uh... Oh, by Daddy Yankee. Yeah. This is bringing me back to my people in Miami. So it's kind of like positive and... Do you, do you know the song or no? I've never heard... No, listen. I... Should I turn it off? No, let's see what's here. Because right now people are shazamming this in their car. How long is that song? 320. Oh, so, you have 30 seconds? No, no, no. Oh, I'm, I'm, you, you. Yeah. <laughs> There's the hook. This is literally what I'm listening to. This is the to. music of my people back in Miami. Okay, I like so it. So you listen to this for three straight days? Well, it's probably been like 10 straight days now at oh least. But yes, that, I've done that for that tournament. And I think there's another one I did the same thing. But yeah, I do that a lot. I just have one song, and then it but, gets okay, me but, in the zone. But, okay, so yeah, so you basically, it's not like a superstition thing. Nope. Okay. It's like, well, at some point there kind of is, but <laughs> it's definitely just like a, I don't know how to describe it, and I was speaking to someone about this recently. Um, I, I get like hyper-focused when I'm doing things. Like I'm always late. Because what happens is, like, I go to the gym and I'm, like, 100% into what I'm doing. And I kind of, like, this happens with poker. <laughs> like, time goes very quickly for me, like, in general in life. Like, yeah. when I'm doing a task, time goes very quick. So you sit um, down at the poker table and all of a sudden they're saying break time and you're like, oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I'm in a tournament, I just get so, so focused. And I think that I've heard that a lot, the same song on repeat, that it does help, like, I don't know, some certain brain waves or whatever it is. Yeah. You're going to be dreaming about Daddy Yankee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have any weird or useless talents? Hmm. Uh, I bet you're really good at changing a tire. <laughs> I like like. Can you do it in less than thirty seconds? Like no. like the pit crews did. No. Um. Uh, maybe like on a go kart. Uh. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. The fact that you have raced a little bit, I guess, is a yeah. is a talent you don't use nowadays. That's true. I am a good go kart racer. Mm -hmm. Nobody's beat me. Like if we go to like if I go with friends to like mm -hmm. whatever. But I'm also late, so that helps. Uh, what is what does uh, mom and dad think of you poker? as a poker player? I think they think it's cool. I gotta imagine I, there's something cool about seeing your daughter come home with trophies when, yeah. you, when you're. I think my mom is a little like she's been sweating the World Series updates probably more than anyone. She's like, I haven't slept. <laughs> she's like, I go, like she just she watches every tournament. Like even if like me or Alex isn't in, she's just like sweating updates and then she'll tell me like, oh, this guy plays like this or whatever. <laughs> she's like the biggest she's like new doing poker research fan. for you. Yeah, wow. she really loves. I Well, I guess she loves it. I don't know the tournament stuff. Uh, I think they they think it's cool. They like do, seeing me do well. Yeah. So I think all parents are like that. I don't know if I was doing badly, what they would think. But. <laughs> All right. So um, we end the podcast the same way every time. Okay. With a question from the random question generator. All right. Your question. What embarrassing trends did you follow when you were younger? Uh, Let's see. You were an 86. I was never a trend follower. You were 1986, right? Yeah, 90, 1986. Um... 
I don't know. I remember wearing like army pants. Were those cool? I don't even know if like it was because other people were doing it. But I, I do remember I went through this weird stage of wearing like army pants. Army pants, huh? But like I had like white and like black the big, ones. The big baggy. Oh, the white and black ones. Yeah, like okay. white, black ones. And then I remember I like, I don't know what age I was at probably like grade six or something i wore like a lot of black eyeliner army mm-hmm. pants i had a weird look going that's the look yeah you've changed your hair color a few times too yes what yeah. is this this looks nice thank you i like this too is this the is this the normal one or this yeah this should be normal now i think <laughs> <laughs> i suppose is that the Light natural brown. oh um i don't even know what that is actually because we have like several I pictures of you like as a blonde yeah you have the short hair I think long I brunette hair usually have like dirty blonde like light brown hair is my natural color i think it's better i should stick to that this is not a trend you need to abandon yeah no i think the the dark hair doesn't look good on me or the yeah the army pants no yeah no army pants for me either yeah kristen thank you so much for coming on the podcast thanks for having me that's it that's the show thanks again to kristen you can follow her and see her representing team party poker on twitter at chrissy b 24 poker If this is your first episode of Poker Stories, then welcome. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and you'll get a fresh episode of the podcast every two weeks. Poker Stories is available on Apple, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and pretty much wherever podcasts are available. If you go the extra mile and leave a rating and review, then let us know about it with an email to pokerstories at cardplayer.com, and we'll say thanks with a free digital subscription to Card Player Magazine. Thanks for listening. Attention American poker players. Do you want to legally cash out your poker winnings to PayPal? Then head to globalpoker.com and see why it's the fastest growing site for US players. That's globalpoker.com.